getting into like you know doing music for movies and tv and things like that that's that's a that's a big business that not a lot of people talk about and that's a uh, um i think there's a lot of like major artists that you might not even know are writing things for for film and tv uh tell me how you kind of got into that uh side of the music business yeah i was completely unaware of the you know the world of library music and the world of like writing for film and tv and stuff like that so to be honest you know i, I moved here with my band and i was just focused on putting out records and booking tours and doing my own thing you know i got introduced to andrew and liz our guitarist and uh, bassist who are just a producer couple here in la and I, you know when i met them i just wanted to like you know work with them man i was kind of doing session vocals around la singing around and getting hired to do stuff and really just trying to prove my worth and like let people know hey man i can write too i, I can write top line and melody and you know so it was just kind of like proving my worth for a few years there but when i did meet andrew and liz i was just super stoked because they've produced some really killer stuff over the years and you know i just wanted to work with them and learn from them and stuff and then um you know a year or two after working with them and them kind of teaching me the ropes of uh you know licensing world and catalog stuff it was kind of like hey man you want to uh you know bash out some hard rock stuff and you know license that too and then that's kind of the beginning of all good things you know it was uh, a few different singers even in the beginning and we call it kind of had like different styles the more like i guess epic drawn out cinematic stuff we'd have a different guy sing and i'd sing the more heavy screamy stuff in the beginning and uh it was just us bashing stuff out in the studio not thinking about it man and um it, it never intended on being anything but a licensing band you know but then as we went on and had more and more fun with it and it started growing bigger than all our other projects we were working on too. It was like, man, we're able to reach so many more people through like getting our music placed on film and TV and commercials. And I'm always blown away how many people will Shazam new music and find it and discover it. <laughs> and by just being like, Hey Siri, what is this artist or what is this song? Like, I don't really do it, but I mean, you know, thousands of people have found us that way, which is always incredible. So, I mean, we're grateful for every license we've had just to, you know, we've reached so many new ears in different countries and, you know, we never know where our music's getting licensed until, until people comment on our videos on YouTube or, uh, you know, upload their own stuff. Or a lot of times they'll just message us on Instagram and say, hey, dude, I just heard your thing on the Olympics or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, it's, it's super exciting every time we hear a placement. We really don't know where it's going to be. But, uh, you know, this year it was like in the Stanley Cup playoffs and the yeah. Stanley Cup final. And, you know, it's just popping up, man. For the glory is that song that won't quit. It keeps trucking along and uh, sporting events have been loving using it. It's been great. Yeah, it was a uh, sporting events in the State of the Union ads, which I thought Dude, was that was crazy. wild, man. Yeah, I'm looking on like Biden's like talking with for the glory in the background. I was laughing so hard. I'm like, this is insane, dude. Like that was the moment. I mean, yeah, one of those licenses where, you know, we'll get weird things like dance moms and like stuff. You're like, what the hell? But like, yeah, when you see like the president like speaking over your uh, your, your song, you're like, wow, this is crazy, dude. Like this is kind of wild. When you do the licensing stuff like that, do you guys have any control over where it goes or is it just kind of like a catalog that I can log into and be like, I want that song? That's kind of the thing, man, is that, yeah, it's like we don't have control over it, at least the early stuff. You know, obviously the new record now that we're signed with Better Noise, like there's a lot of different negotiations that went down. I mean, they're very different agreements between Extreme and Better Noise. And uh, yeah, we're kind of leaving that licensing world behind and kind of moving along as like a normal band now that we've been able to connect the dots and, you know, get on the road, start touring and finally have an album release date and stuff. But yeah, I mean, um, that's what's funny about the old stuff is it's like it's all in the library. And if, uh, you know, the CW or whatever network has access to it, they can just take any of our stuff and run with it, which is beautiful. I have no problem with that. A lot of people would be against it in the beginning. I was against it. I'm like, dude, I want to have control. I don't want them putting it in something I don't want. But like generally, man, if you're writing hard rock, like, you know, cinematic kind of hard rock, it, it's usually not going to end up anywhere you don't want it. It ends up in more epic stuff than not. So, I mean, I've just been grateful that they're doing the hard work and finding the right uh, shows for our music to be on because, you know, we just seem to supply them music and there seems to be an outlet for it. And it's worked out great for us so far.